Yeah, previously as well, uh, I still remember our debut together in Kolkata, where, uh, you know, the pitch kind of, uh, I wouldn't say uh, like this, but uh, on, on day four, on day five was, you know, slightly uh, lower and slower. And he knows how to bowl on that pitches. Uh, he gets reverse swing straight into play uh, once he knows, um, you know, there's some help that that, that is on offer. Um, and he uses that condition. See, it's not easy to uh, bowl when you know the reverse swing is happening. You need to pitch it in the right area. You need to make sure that, you know, the ball is just around off stump uh, so that it comes and hits, hits the middle stump. Otherwise, sometimes you can drag on and uh, while doing that, you can, you can leak a lot of runs as well. So, um, uh, I guess he's mastered that pretty well by now, uh, bowling with the old ball and uh, trying to bowl to reverse. Um, and yes, these type of conditions are pretty ideal for him. Uh, he gets, uh, you know, the batsman uh, uh, making play all the balls, which is slightly tough on that particular kind of pitch. You know, when you know you have to play all six balls uh, and the pitch, pitch at times, as, uh, as we have seen, misbehaving, uh, you know, uh, doing something from the crack or staying low at times as well. So it keeps you in the game as well, uh, you know, for the fielders, for all all, all the other bowlers as well. Uh, and the batsman really doesn't know, uh, you know, what is coming next uh, because he can he can swing both ways as well. So I think by now he's mastered how to bowl with the old ball. And uh, growing up in Calcutta, where you know uh, there is not much of bounce, uh, you know, uh, when he started playing, obviously. Uh, but now it's a different Kolkata. But uh, when he started playing, uh, I'm sure it was kind of a similar kind of tracks he grew up on. Yeah, I, I thought he kept really well. Uh, you know, it's not it's not easy. Even though uh, you know we we grew up in conditions like this, uh, it's not easy for the keeper because odd ball turns, odd ball stays low, and then there's sudden bounce. Uh, so keeper, as a keeper, I guess you know uh, I don't know that technicality of it, but you got to be very still uh, when you're trying to keep wickets on pitches like that. And I thought he did a great job. Uh, even today when we saw the ball, uh, a few balls which didn't carry through him, uh, he put his body behind it to make sure that he doesn't, that, you know, the runs are not offered uh, so easily. So, you know, uh, we've seen, we've seen Saha grown as a keeper over the years and he's continued to getting uh, better day by day. And plus, not to forget those crucial uh, reviews as well, uh, which we took of uh, Philander. Uh, you know, so he plays a big part uh, in our lineup for sure. Uh, that is probably why he's back in the squad. Uh, he missed out because of his, uh, you know, unfortunate injury. But again, speaking of Pant as well, you know, uh, he he's definitely uh, a quality that uh, you know any team wants uh, in the squad. But again, uh, you know, uh, what is right and what is wrong, I'm not, I, I really can't talk about it and who should play and who shouldn't. But, you know, Pant, we have seen uh, what he can do with the bat. Uh, and of course, he's working hard on his game, he's working hard on his keeping, batting, playing in these kind of, in these kind of conditions uh, where the ball is going to keep low. Uh, so, keeping plays a big part and I'm, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, along with our fielding coach and, uh, you know, the other guy, other guys around him as well, trying to help him. Uh, he, he might, he will definitely get better with, uh, you know, the days, uh, how the days goes by. And you can learn from Saha. Yeah, of course. I mean, Saha plays a big part, uh, you know, when he was not playing in West Indies, he was, we have seen them uh, regularly talking about, uh, you know, how he needs to improve. Every session he used to keep wickets and he used to come back, Saha was the one, first one to go to him and talk about his keeping. So, they have great understanding between them and I, I hope that continues for a long time. Um, see, uh, on, on a pitch like that, you, you, you're not sure where the ball is going to go. And because you're, you're uh, constantly, uh, you know, uh, facing different batsmen all the time, so you don't know what sort of shots they're going to play. Like someone for someone like uh, Faf, Duplessis plays closer to the body. It's ideal to stand uh, closer. But we saw uh, him go wide outside off stump, which could have 
gone around third or fourth slip. So, you never know. I mean, you, you just decide instinctively uh, on that particular spot whether you want to have first slip or you want that slip to be a little widened. Um, yes, we saw a few balls going uh, in the gap uh, uh, last evening when Pujara was batting. Uh, but again, you know, you uh, sometimes when you place the fielder and the ball doesn't go there, uh, it doesn't mean that you are tactically wrong, uh, you know. But it's just it's just that uh, sometimes, um, you know, the way we have planned and the way bowlers are thinking, the way you have to think about the batters as well. Uh, some batsman likes to play the shots outside off stump, so which means the ball will go slightly wider than uh, closer, uh, the first slip. Uh, bo batsman who plays closer to the body will, uh, the ball will come uh, near the first and second slip. So, it all depends on the batters batting at that particular time and what kind of line we are uh, trying to bowl at that point. Yeah, it is, it is important because it's pretty humid out there and hot. Uh, so, we wanted we wanted the bowlers, the fast bowlers especially, because I thought more than the spinners, fast bowlers actually looked very dangerous, uh, you know, on that particular track. So, we wanted Shami and Ishan to be fresh uh, in case uh, there might not be any help uh, for the spinners uh, as the game progressed, which we saw towards the end, there wasn't much happening. So, we wanted our fast bowlers to be fresh. Uh, and then uh, we, we decided that we will try and make them bowl in short spells, whether it's two overs or three years, because three overs, because we wanted them to be fresh and we all know when Shami is fresh, fresh, what he can do, along with some biryani. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, how much did it take for you to sort of guard against emotional letdown after the 100 or the second innings, when you come back and follow up the 100 the second innings? And will we see more of the so, say again, sorry, I. First part, I mean, how much did you have to guard, emotion, guard against the emotional letdown? There was so much scrutiny uh, over you coming into this test match or you were a big under Scrutiny? Yeah, in terms of uh, Rohit Sharma opening the stock. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, to get 100 there and then to follow it up to 100 again, how much did you have to guard against the emotional letdown? And also, then we'll see more of it over. Um, see, uh, I've, I've protected myself with a shield around me for a long time now. And all those things, what happens outside, uh, doesn't come inside that shield. So, uh, what people talk and what people think of me, it doesn't really bother me because eventually, I, I have to play my game, I have to enjoy my game because it was my dream to play cricket. And, uh, and I'm living that dream. Uh, what happens outside, I never thought of when I was young, uh, what people will talk. Whether will people talk about me or not, I never thought about all that. So, now that people are talking, I have protected myself with a shield around me and that shield is pretty strong. Uh, nothing comes inside that. Uh, so, and talking about opening, yes, uh, I, I, I knew uh, that at some stage I will open because that communication between management and myself happened long time ago, uh, that you might have to do it at some stage. So, uh, for the past two or three years, I was prepared for it mentally. Uh, whenever I was not playing a test match in the nets, I was batting with the new ball, uh, trying to be uh, ready if the opportunity comes. Uh, so, mentally, I was very much, very much ready. And yes, it's a great start, still a long way to go. I'm, I'm definitely very happy and pleased with the performance, but it's not the end, uh, it's just a start. So. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, good things are there to follow and I just need to enjoy the game, enjoy what I do and enjoy my batting. Sir. You have spoken about uh, your innings as a test opener. Uh, does this remain the most special match in the 28 that you have played considering you have got through a few records and the Sixers won as well? No, see, uh, all those things are nice uh, to happen along the way. but. I'm, I've said this many times, I'm not here for records, not into look into records. Uh, I just want to enjoy the game. That's all I'll say again and again. I, I know it might be boring that he keeps talking about the same thing again and again, but that is what it is. Honestly, sp and I can't say that it's the most special. Of course, your first test match when you play that, that's the most special test match. Uh, 
you know, uh, so, and I don't know when the last would be, so I can't say anything about it right now. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess the first test match I played in 2013 was the most special test match so far.